Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm so glad to see you. Today we have a special video. So Melanie left a comment saying that she enjoyed my videos and she liked that I took such care with details. For a small channel like mine, a little appreciation goes a long way. So I replied back asking if she wanted me to cover any specific dish and she said yes. You can read her reply here. And I thought, that's perfect. I'm Korean. So this recipe would take me back to my roots, the flavors from the kitchen when my mom used to cook for us. So let's dive in. Let's get some spring onions. We'll also need some ginger. Wait, you're probably wondering what's happening. I've watched other videos and they don't include ginger. What's going on? Well, I can tell you that ginger is also a distinctive Korean ingredient. So it makes no sense to leave that out. And of course, garlic. That's the one flavor that everyone recognizes as Korean. Well, especially if you're Korean. Gochujang. That's Korean hot chili paste. That's another distinctive Korean taste. So we can't leave that out. Sesame seeds. Sesame oil. I love that taste, by the way. And soy sauce for the marinade. I'm using low sodium so I can control the level of seasoning later, if it's needed. Full list of ingredients below. Wait, hold on, how could I forget? Kimchi. If there's one flavor that says Korean, it's kimchi. None of the videos I've seen included this, but how could you leave this out? I want to taste Korean flavor and Korean culture with every bite. That's how a chef thinks when he's designing a recipe. Okay, here's a tip. I'm not gonna tell you the exact amount of soy sauce. Instead, get the container that will hold the marinade and pour in your soy sauce. It doesn't have to completely cover the eggs. We'll take care of that later. Let's get the eggs. There's a lot of discussion about organic versus non. Free range, humane treatment. Let me tell you, the best way is to source locally. If you can buy from local farms, that's the best way. Now, we're gonna poke little holes in the eggs. Search for the fatter bottom and poke a hole. I didn't have a pin, so I used a knife. It's pretty easy. You see, eggs get really angry and steamed up when you cook them. So they need an outlet. And there you go. Did I say steamed up? That's exactly what we're gonna do. I did a video talking about this in detail. I'll drop a link below. But it's the best way to cook eggs and ensure an easy peel. The constant temperature of steam means that we only have to vary the duration to ensure that perfectly cooked soft eggs. To be clear, we're talking eggs taken straight from the fridge. For me, it's seven minutes in the steamer. You may want more, you may want less. But the temperature of steam is always 215 degrees Fahrenheit. So all you have to do is adjust the time. Easy. By the way, I've seen people pour in vinegar when they're boiling eggs. A spoonful of cold water is sometimes added. None of that has any real effect. It's a waste of time. Steam your eggs and get it right every time. And remember to poke your eggs. They get so angry. After the steaming is done, it's time to wake them up. Drop them in ice cold water. Did you ever wonder why this works? Why do we do this? The steaming shocked the membrane inside the egg to contract. Now we're shocking them again to loosen up. That's the whole point. You're shocking the membrane into detaching from the egg white and then peeling is so very easy. My dishes are about bringing people together. That includes the ingredients. You'll see me do this a lot. I like to blend my ingredients, so I do this. Breaking down the walls of the cells accelerates the cooking, integrates the flavors, and feels cool. Some people joke that you blend stuff and call it modernist cuisine. There's some truth to that, but also some chemistry. It works. One thing, save half your spring onions for later. Speaking of modernist cuisine, one quick word about sous vide for eggs. 
That works great if you don't care about peeling the eggs. It's great for pasteurization of eggs. My most popular video shows how that's done and I'll drop a link below. But sous vide doesn't shock the membrane, so peeling is harder. Time to put it all together. Drop in those eggs, pour in the blended marinade, and sprinkle some sesame seeds, and put the remaining half of the spring onions. Let that soak overnight, and then let's take a look. Would you look at that? I forgot to cut one open to show you, but this picture I took for the thumbnail shows you what that looks like. Perfect custard-like consistency and color. That's the way. That's what you want. I had this for dinner and let me tell you, delish. So go ahead and subscribe for more cooking fun. Next, I'll be doing a fun video about the Costco hot dog recipe. And I'll see you in the next video.